I am happy to finally show you some video and some data of our prototype intercooled 427 LS twin turbocharged X RAM motor. Um, there's just a ton of work that's went into this for the ideas of being able to get a motor to the end user that doesn't require all that much fabrication. Okay, so here we are, 427 twin turbo XRAM prototype, 700 RPM idle, just f***ing chilling. I mean, KPA reading, what do we got on that? What do we got for map? 45, 45 KPA at 700 an RPM. Bad to the bone. Listen to that. This is a thousand horsepower engine that literally has 100% stock characteristics until you get into the loud pedal. Thousand foot pounds, thousand horse, pump gas that you can hold on. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut this off. I want you to just watch how long I push the key for. literally breathe on the key and it starts right right the f up awesome see it just coming down on its cycle from the start there all right so this is a six psi pull
want to show you here, <clears throat> we've got it labeled water and oil. And what this actually is, is oil is the air coming out of the intercooler and water is the air before the intercooler. So we have 174 degree uh, temperature uh, before the cooler, 95 degrees after the intercooler. That's at 3000 RPM and you can see just how good of a job this intercooler is doing. You know, near the end of the pull, we've got 255 degrees of air temperature and it's only 120 degrees uh, after the intercooler. So it's knocking it down 125 degrees. Uh, and usually every 10 degrees is, is worth a 1% of power. So you're looking at, you know, 12% power increase right there. So the intercooler is working pretty good. So 255 in, 170 out. Okay, so here's a view of the twin electronic throttle bodies. Go ahead and cycle the throttle. Oh, twin throttle body! Electronic throttle body! Okay, what you're looking at here is our new twin turbo intercooled XRAM LS intake. So we've got some really special things we've got going on here. This is a 427 cubic inch motor. We're running dual drive-by wire throttle bodies. So it's uh, electronically controlled throttles. Twin 90 millimeter throttles. We've got our really special XRAM uh, runner, all t you know, bitchin' taper angle, the whole nine. And then we went ahead and we've built water to air intercooler in between. So you've got your plenum volume and then your intercooler and then it shoots into the runner here. So if you go on the back of the manifold, you can see we're cooling, we're running water through the back of the manifold. So the water runs through the manifold and then exits through that piping back underneath. So in and out on both sides. If you look at there, we got water on that side of the, of the plenum and then water on that side of the plenum. And that's where the intercoolers reside. Now, and what we've done is the whole idea around this is packaging. So if you look, you can see how low this intake is. And that makes a big deal because you can put it under all sorts of hoods. You don't have to worry about intercoolers in front of the fenders. You don't have to worry about fabricating. The turbo is literally just shooting right into the throttle body. We've got a blow off attached. So we have a blow off valve on that. And we have a blow off valve on this. We've got V band connections from the turbo to the throttle body. And then what's neat also is we're actually running this on a GM computer. So that's an E67 right there. Um, and we're running the throttles, something new here, which is an Osmo twin throttle controller. So it basically takes a signal off of the master throttle body and mimics, mimics it to the secondary throttle body. So GM computer, all GM sensors, a controller for the twin throttle body, twin intercooled built into the intake, all the injectors are hidden under the underside of the manifold. So if you look, that's your fuel rail and your injectors. All of that's on the underside of the manifold. And we're doing all of our testing today in full trim. Running through the air cleaners. With all the accessories on. Even our awesome, look at that, power steering reservoir. Hell yeah. 20 feet in the air. 
We even kind of did like a makeshift Chad Waite awesome exhaust here. Um, running, a, running through a muffler and some pipe length to try to really, really get it. Uh, so what we're seeing in the car, it, what we're seeing in the dining room is what we're seeing in the car. Um, also to note is that this is all on 91 octane. Almost all the pulls here are on 91 octane. We're running the factory knock sensor. So we've got uh, 14 pounds of boost. 947 horsepower and 904 foot-pounds of torque and look at the broadness of that I mean it's that's what's really sweet about this deal 830 foot-pounds here we still got 830 foot-pounds here and that's gonna move a car again if you look at the pressure drop which is again really cool you've got 14.3, 14.2, and 14. So you're only seeing three tenths of a pound pressure drop uh, on these suckers. So there, there you have it. So that's a 14.7 pounds of boost on that pull. We added a little bit of timing and a little bit of gas, and you can see the torque number is now at 1,000 horse and 1,038 foot-pounds at 6,000. With 972 at 4,300, you still got 771 at 3,800. So pretty nice, pretty stout, still pretty climbing. Very happy with that. The air feels look good. So there's your 1,000, 1,000. With a splash of gas. All right, this is another thing to show is that this is resting right on the valley plate cover. We're not even at seven inches total height right here. So right off the valley plate cover, it's, the manifold is not even seven inches tall. So you want to fit this in a vet? We actually have fit in a vet. You just got to cut the cowl area. This is a direct bolt in into the fifth gen. Camaro right so this motor is actually going in right into a new fifth gen Camaro have a fifth gen Camaro want thousand horse bolt in no problem this particular engine it only has 280 pounds open spring pressure so the cam it's like 123 124 LCA huge wide lobe separation it idles at like 700 rpm literally you will get 100,000 miles out of the valve train out of this engine. We're trying to make, this motor was really like a, an experiment in being able to drop in a thousand horse on pump gas that is not hard to do and be able to get tons of reliability out of it. So we've ran this engine completely on all the factory accessories. We've made a nice little dog shit exhaust here in, in the dining room through the air cleaners and I've had a buddy in here tuned by Tad we teaching me all this stuff on the actual GM computer four days we've been mapping on the computer and we'll be probably having another 20 days by the time we're done but the, the initial results are fantastic we're making a thousand horsepower on 91 with a cam that is so small you can't even see it <laughs> So I'm very excited about this package. Um, you know, you can you can go ahead and purchase this package, and you don't have to mount intercoolers. You don't have to build intake plumbing. It's all basically going to be a drop-in, with the exception of figuring out where to put some heat exchangers to cool the intercoolers and some plumbing. If this thing's mapped all the way up to 250 kPa. You want to go five pounds of boost, you go in the car, you set it at five pounds of boost, the computer already knows what to do, it turns the map into it, 
You want to go to 10 pounds of boost, you set the car at 10 pounds of boost, the computer adjusts itself to 10 pounds of boost. So basically what I'm saying is, is 500 horsepower in the morning, you feel like 1,000 in the afternoon, you turn it to 1,000, the computer takes care of it. And not only that, it's all on 91 piss. So 1,000 horse, 1,000 foot pounds, 91 octane, I can go in the gas tank when I'm running out, I can take a leak in there, and I can still make 1,000 horsepower. This motor is bitching.